I apologize for being just a little bit late on this. Um, little technical difficulties at the rail household. Um, thank you for uh, everybody coming on board. I uh, didn't think we would be back on Zoom and um, here we are tonight. Uh, this is the town council meeting for January 4th, uh, 2022. I hope, uh, hope everybody had a happy new year and uh, it's good to see everybody. I uh, wish we were all back in person, but um, we are back uh, Zoom tonight. Um, Sue, I see you on. Would you be able to uh, do the attendance for us? Yes. Uh, Councillor Biggs? Sue, he had a military commitment that came up uh, last minute. He will not be joining us. Okay, thank you. Councillor Forrest? Here. Councillor Hill? Here. Councillor Lesser? Here. Councillor O'Connor? Here. Councillor Pelletier? Here. Councillor Pentelo? Here. Deputy Mayor Mazzarella? Here. Mayor Rell? Here. Thank you, Sue. Thank you. Yep, we appreciate it. Um, first, before, uh, because there's no um, council comments uh, or town manager comments tonight. Um, there are uh, reports from boards and commissions. I just thought it would be appropriate right now just to say a few remarks on the, the hard work and the, the fine uh, ladies and gentlemen that we have working with uh, us at the um, town. Uh, I, my hat goes off to uh, our emergency management team, uh, Anthony Dignati, uh, Karen Tomchek, as well as the entire group from um, uh, physical services, parks and rec, and um, even, you know, I got to say it, Bonnie, you are on the phone, texting, emailing, and, and keeping us all informed on the status of the testing kits and the masks that were coming into uh, the town. Um, you know, despite some hiccups early on and uh, some delays, the town did receive about 1,500 masks uh, towards the end of last week, uh, actually over the weekend. And um, we were able to distribute 1,300 of them yesterday uh, to residents who waited patiently outside of Weathersfield High School in their cars. Um, we did hear some uh, rumblings about traffic and we're hopeful that in the next uh, go around, if there is gonna be a next go around, um, we can work better, uh, more appropriate ways to get uh, these into the uh, residents' hands. Uh, 200 did go to our physical services, uh, emergency management, uh, first responders, police and fire, so that they, um, they themselves can ensure their safety while they're reporting uh, on to uh, you know, the duties at hand that they have to take care of uh, to keep us all safe. We did give some to congregate housing and those that um, um, are, are less fortunate and unable to make it out of their homes and uh, um, are more susceptible to, unfortunately, viruses and um, uh, things that uh, um, beyond their control, they, uh, they can't uh, handle themselves. So um, hats off to our entire town crew. Uh, they came out on not only the weekend, but they came out yesterday, which was a holiday for them to, uh, to do this distribution. So before the meeting started, I just wanted to um, you know, say thank you to them. And obviously, if anybody else has any comments, I know Tom, uh, Deputy Mayor Tom Mazzarella was there, I think, the entire time. Um, it was pretty cold. I didn't know it was, the temperatures were dropping that quickly yesterday. But when I saw all of you guys when I got over there, it, it was pretty frigid. So uh, thank you, Tom, for, uh, for lending a hand and being there. And to, uh, to anybody else who may have come by to... Uh, uh, wish them well and uh, help out with the distribution. Um, I guess if anybody else has any comments or any, uh, if you have any questions or anything like that, we'll be happy to answer those um, tonight or um, look for an update or an email from uh, Bonnie in the next couple of days if we are looking to, um, to get a second shipment of either masks or uh, testing kits here in town. And with that, I'll move over uh, on to you, uh, Bonnie, and uh, talk about AR, uh, ARP, ARPA funding, and some yes. ideas 
that uh, you and the town departments had. I know at our last meeting, you br briefly discussed it. And, uh, and prior to that, we had Mike Mzinski from CCM talking about some of the um, possibilities. So um, the floor is yours to, uh, to discuss some of the priorities from the town side. Yes, just so everyone is aware, um, what I did is I worked with the staff. We came up with a list of potential projects uh, and uh, I've worked diligently with them to try to come up with certain projects that would fit in certain categories. As you're aware, we have two pots of money. One of them is th what you're looking at right now is the a ARPA COVID related proposed projects uh, to which we have 1,383,788 to spend. These may not look like the most exciting projects, but uh, the reason, uh, and these are my suggestions, these are only proposals, this is all up to the council. But the reason I put them in all of these in this category is these are all projects that I feel would um, absolutely be able to be approved by auditors or federal auditors or state auditors and fit within the entire uh, definition of what COVID related proposed projects are. So you'll see 90% of these have to do with HVAC and air quality, except for a food bank, which would help expand the facilities we have now and the Everbridge citizen alert system which would be fabulous for, a, for us to be able to alert all of our citizens with something exactly that just happened, such as our um, distribution of the test kits. We could have used a system like that and we right now do not have anything like that. So that's just the COVID related proposed projects. Uh, the larger list, which you're gonna see next is, um, the use of lost revenue. And this is certainly where we have more money. Uh, and then here we have 5,802,964. Certainly the list that I have here is much more than the total we have, but again, they're just suggestions. They're things that we could definitely we need, but we could utilize the funds for. And before, you know, I guess I wanna say to the council, what I'm looking for from you guys is not to go into these in specifics, but what is the process that's going to be used to determine how we are going to spend these funds. And so, for example, um, the council could make all the decisions. Um, you could have the Capital Improvement Committee, when they start meeting in a couple of weeks, handle the capital projects that are listed here and in the previous um, a list of projects. You could decide on a dollar amount, for example, for EDIC, because something like EDIC, um, which I have in here for 600 and nonprofit loss, which is right below for 100,000, that certainly does not fit within a capital committee. So you'd have to decide how you want to, either you make that decision and let EDIC decide the best way to utilize those funds. And then with the nonprofit loss, for example, we could, I could work with social services to come up with something. Um, for the parks, the, again, this is just a suggestion. You may want to say to the parks committee, okay, uh, we're willing to give you X amount of money in the lost revenue funds to update the parks. Um, and then say, come back to us with a list. So that's another suggestion. So I guess what I'm looking for you is to kind of give me some guidance on how you wish to proceed with moving forward with all of these projects. Um, these are again are just suggestions, but I figured it's at least a way to get you thinking in the direction of where you wanna go with all these funds. And we can get into specifics on these at a later date. So mayor, I mean, that's kind of where I'm at. Okay, thank you, Bonnie. Uh, does any uh, anybody from the council have any questions or comments to Bonnie on this? Mayor. Uh, yep. I'm sorry. I got a. I got the. Uh, Kenny, I got the uh, uh, screen share, so I can't see everybody on there. There we go. 
Okay. Uh, thank Yeah, go, thank go, go, go for it, Kenny. Thank you, Mayor. Appreciate it. Bonnie, thank you to you and the department heads to come up with this preliminary list. Uh, really appreciate it. As I've said before, I think this is a great opportunity for us, maybe a once in a generation opportunity for us to invest in Weathersfield's future with all these funds. As for the process, I have a question to you in terms of the timing. What is our um, time horizon in terms of allocating and spending these funds, uh, Bonnie, uh, if you could tell us that. And then I wanna talk about potentially setting up a subcommittee um, to review some of these uh, proposals. You have until the 20, fiscal year 2024 to allocate funds, not spend funds, allocate funds. In both categories? Yes, the, as in, far as I know, yes. I checked with Mike O'Neill on that. Okay, so we can spend any amount uh, this, this year that we want, but we have to by 2024, correct? Correct, allocate, correct. Allocate, yeah. So um, again, I think this is a wonderful opportunity. There's so many worthwhile causes. There's so many needs in town. I think maybe, and I'll throw it out for discussion, maybe there's a subcommittee, maybe a subcommittee of the council that reviews these items and proposals and other potential proposals a little closer and comes up with some, some recommendations. And I just throw that out there as a, as a starting point. That's it, thank you, Mayor. Okay, thank you, Councilman. Uh, Deputy Mayor Mazzarella. <clears throat> yeah, um, this is for Bonnie, I guess. Uh, is there a way to find out which items are in the capital five-year plan currently? Uh, some of them, you know, for example, drainage, you know, that may be in the plan or may, may not. Some of these may be new capital items. And uh, I think it would be helpful to find out which items have been on the list for a long time waiting. Maybe those should take priority over uh, a new idea. Oh, absolutely. Um, I, what I could do is take the list and come up with like an asterisk or something and a code. And Derek and I could work together because I bet you, <laughs> I'd hate to say this, 80% of these are on those those lists or have been. Um, but I'll be glad to do that and just come up with a coding for it. In the town CIAC, Bonnie, they, are they meeting this month and next month? Yes, um, Derek, correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe they start meeting January 19th. That's correct. And they That's already right. have their schedule set up there. Okay. Yeah, I think I saw it on the calendar uh, the other day. So, um, you know, maybe, and Tom, if I, if I remember, are you the uh, liaison? Yeah. So um, we could probably, um, you know, sit in on that meeting and, uh, you know, see what the priorities are for CIAC and maybe have that committee that I know they've been involved in this for a number of years. Um, talk about those projects and obviously the, the town staff, Derek uh, sits in on it as well. Maybe find out what the priorities have been in the past and you know, can they prioritize the priorities, uh, if you will, to um, um, see what um, may be most pressing for, uh, for the town. And if I could just add on to that, uh, Mayor, <clears throat> well, how, do, how do we handle the, uh, let's say we typically try to allocate 900000 or a million dollars for capital projects. Are we going to, are we going to use this money instead of that allocation, or are we going to try and do these items plus the 900000 that we normally do. Anybody have thoughts on that? The so CIC typically spends you know expends nine hundred thousand dollars a year on on their projects. Well, we we prioritize nine hundred thousand dollars worth of items, and then some of those may or may not get finalized. Right. 
but we still come as close to that 900,000 as possible to find out what the priorities are. So by, by the 19th, our first meeting, we're gonna start hearing from various departments on their proposed items for this year or the upcoming year. And uh, do we take items that are on this list or just work off of the, you know, five-year plan that exists now for items. They may overlap. I, I don't know if they all overlap. I'm just trying to figure out what what's our game plan for the first meeting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would I would see what overlap there is uh, with you know, what is on this list that Bonnie had shared and with uh, the five-year plan from CIAC. Um, and I think, you know, we probably should have future conversations on whether or not that $900,000 would be, you know, put back into this, the, the ARPA funding or, or stand alone as we've done it in the past. Um, you know, it's probably a decision we'd want to make um, when we start to see what the, the projects are and what some of the costs uh, associated with them are. Thank you. Councilman Hill. Thank you, Mayor. Appreciate it. Uh, and just to piggyback on what the Deputy Mayor was uh, was saying, um, you know, I, I do like the idea, you know, to, to, to um, the town manager's point, a lot of these items look like they've been on capital improvement lists for years and years. So using some of these dollars to kind of tick off some of these items that probably wouldn't get done for, you know, another five to 10 years. I think there's, there's some, there's some merit to that. Um, that being said, um, you know, I, I don't like, I just want to kind of make a statement of in terms of that $900,000 we tend to allocate in terms of budgeting. I don't want to use these dollars um, to, I would like to use these dollars to supplement those because to going back to Mr. Mazinski's point from CCM when he came, you know, his, the, the goal and intent of these dollars is to stretch them as long as they can uh, use, make the best, most efficient use of these dollars. So if we're just taking money in place of money, we would have spent otherwise, you know, I feel like that, you know, the, the goal and the intent of this program is kind of lost there. That being said, you know, taking off as many of these projects as we can, um, I think is, you know, is, will be, is a good use of those dollars. That being said, also things that are, wouldn't be on that list uh, specifically for EDIC, the economic recovery. I know a lot of the other towns are looking into this uh, in terms of small business loads and grants. Um, I think that's something that's well worthwhile. That's not necessarily on um, capital improvement. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I think I saw Mark Trahan's eyes light up when he, Heard that. Oh. Uh, Councilwoman Pelletier. Thank you. Um, I, well, I, I have a couple points. Um, one thing I, I think, you know, the Capital Improvement Advisory Committee should prioritize the projects. Um, there is that portion of the money that can only be used for um, certain COVID relief things that, and those projects, um, I think maybe we should prioritize um, also because uh, we're more limited in what we could spend the money on. And I know some of these um, HVAC things have been on the list for a while. And, um, but I think I'd be interested in seeing how, you know, uh, the CIAC would uh, prioritize things. The second point was um, about the, the EDIC. I think um, I know that Mr. Tran is here to talk about the um, tax, um, policy, but I would like to maybe, if it's appropriate, kind of pick his brain about, um, you know, what he could do with the money, because I would like to see the money spent where we have a return on investment and um, not just use it on, you know, capital projects that, um, you know, have been outstanding. There are obviously a significant number of capital projects. We could spend the whole thing on that. But I think um, I would like to see something using this money where we get a return on investment. And if it's, 
if it's okay, I would like to hear from um, Mr. Trahan about what the EDIC could do with the money and um, you know, maybe an amount that would be, uh, that could make a difference. Um, sure, uh, Councilor Pelletier and everyone, uh, happy, healthy uh, new year to you. Um, in talking with the mayor back a few weeks ago and actually even a couple of months ago when the ARPA money first came up, uh, we talked about uh, six letters and that was quality of life or QOL or ROI. Uh, were the two things that we were trying to be focused on, on how we look at whatever we would be allotted for funding wise. The return on investment side um, I, is something that is kind of near and dear to my heart. Um, I'm, we would love an opportunity to maybe find a way um, to uh, take even the redevelopment agency and use some of the money to not only give out, but get back and maybe get even a return on that money. Um, we need the right project for that though, Councilor Pelletier. That's really what comes up. There are items in EDIC when it comes to the real estate side in the Weathersfield community, we're always, um, hamstrung might be the wrong word, but maybe it's the right word. We have to work with whatever the developers want to do, you know, what um, and, and what they, they control the property and whatnot, we can add a helping hand um, where it's possible, but we have to have the right project in order to get that ROI. There was a, a, a number of items that I provided to Bonnie and to the mayor and to Ken um, uh, regarding um, a, a um, kind of a fleshed out concepts and ideas that we have, because I think you're right, um, uh, as well as uh, uh, Councillor Hill, we have flexibility in what we can do with the funding that we do get. And we do want to make sure that we do use it for things where it's, we're not just you know, doing something because something needed to be done 10 years ago, although those projects are important, we, we don't get a lot of opportunities to get this type of money. Um, so we're going to take our time uh, and find the right avenues for it as we go. That's great. Uh, Councilman O'Connor. Thank you. Um, thank you, Mark, for that. I just have a, one thought, you know, and it goes to the intent of what these funds were for. And I think before we allocate anything to any of these items, I think the question we have to ask ourselves every time is, did this have an impact as a result of COVID? And so as much as we have these funds and we can use them to pay down a lot of things that are important to the town, you know, I, I think the intent of those funds were, you know, they're, you know, think of what, kids went through during this period and think about the emotional health that they're suffering with now as a result of this and the things that they lost out on and when I look at some of these items here for an example the town garage roof you know yes does it need repair yes do we need to find funds for that yes but how did COVID affect the town garage roof would that money be better allocated towards a health and wellness program geared towards youths that are struggling with the after effect or what have you from COVID. I mean, there are kids right now who, you know, the uh, rate is astronomical today and it's getting higher every day. You know, what does that do to the mental health and long-term well-being of the children in Weathersfield? And so some of that stuff, I think just as, as a rule of thumb is, I think we have to factor that in if we're going to do justice to what this was really meant to be used for. Because I can tell you right now, I could sit there and say, you know what, I got some great ideas and I'm sure we could figure out a way to make it fit. But, you know, was there an impact from COVID that justifies that idea? And so I, I, that's just my 10 cents worth, but I just wanted to share that. Uh, Councilman Forrest and then Bonnie. It was very thoughtful, Dan. Well, and you made me you made me think there quite a bit, and um, that was very thoughtful. I'm wondering even if a tack on from that concept is, you know, increased tutoring or ability to catch up with the lost educational years that have happened. Um, I don't know what kind of programming or concept that might take, but it might be an increased ability availability for availability for summer school, etc. 
that said, we're talking about a couple of notes I've been taking along the way is uh, how to do it. Um, and it seems like we could do a subcommittee in a formal sense. I've reached out to you, Mayor, and a few. We've been diligently trying, although COVID's sort of gotten in the way, about having a substantial meeting, um, just about sort of some strategy about moving forward over the next year or two, some planning. It, those conversations, we're going to include some of these items. Um, <clears throat> so we might be able to even informally just sort of create a, not a committee is the right word, or a working group. Uh, to sort of get through some of these concepts, whether you want to do it informally or formally, I think is sort of up to us. But it seems like that would be a good idea. Um, instead of a council as the whole, which, you know, getting through all these items could be kind of tedious. Uh, second concept thought is, you know, a lot of these are concepts that we're going to, you know, agree upon, approve, great. But eventually those will be built or made or created or done. And there will be funds that are left over. So just some thought to some type of a um, like a catch-all allocation at the end. So if we end up doing all this work and we have three, four, five hundred thousand dollars of leftover money because we did a four hundred thousand dollar project but it only cost us three hundred fifty thousand dollars, et cetera, that's all going to roll to the end. But those projects might take a year, or two or three to build, and then all the rest of that money is not allocated. So we should probably just think about some type of a catch-all or concept by which any of the funds that were pre-allocated but then not used, what happens to all those funds? Um, just sort of as we go through this process. Um, a concept also might be just to get some public and also town input. This was given to us from a, a few groups, but we might reach out to the various boards and commissions volunteer as well uh, for some of their insight and ideas. Um, that, and that could be, I, I'm imagining a concept where uh, a public portal could be created just similar, similar, I guess, to what was done um, for the Wilkes, uh, the Keisha farm, or just some portal to say, hey, you know, here's what I'm interested in. Here's where I'd like to see our town use the money. Those could be uh, compilated just like we do for our, our major searches, like town manager search, police search, right? You get a binder, here's where the public was coming in, here's where the town's coming in, here's where your boards of commissions are coming in. And then, and then those interests in a broader sense could be mulled over by uh, this formal informal committee. So that might not be a bad idea to get a feeling. We, there might be a couple ideas that come out there that say, I know it happens to me, just like Mr. O'Connor, uh, Councilor O'Connor just said something that was quite smart. Um, and you might say, hey, you know, that's a really good idea. It wasn't on this list, but I'm glad somebody brought it up and it's something for us to consider. So I think you might be able to get a compilation of ideas in that manner. <clears throat> and um, on the list though that we do have here, I understand it's sort of high level, but what is the, uh, I would be interested in, even if it's like one sentence for each one, what does it do for the town, right? So we might see like, I'm just looking at number one here, new voice system. I might sort of know what that means, but I'm interested in what's the impact going to be. We get that new voice system. This will allow the town boards of education and the town council, you know, town staff to be, have one voice system, which will allow updated blah, 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 blah. And so I know how, we know how the town is gonna to be moving forward or what the progress is from allocating or doing that particular, that particular item. So um, I'd imagine just a little bit more, a little bit more detail um, I see some items here, current upgrade to current parks. I realize that's a, that's a broad overview, but what, you know, here, here's the list, the sub list of the 15 items that could apply to that particular item. And here's what each of them are going to do for the town. Allocate a new skate park, baseball field, lacrosse field, whatever that particular item is. So we know how the town is moving forward and going to progress with each particular item. Um, and I had a couple other items generally that I was going to talk to you, Mayor, uh, along with the other leadership sort of a little bit more privately about that might be put into here, but that would be that compilation of ideas. One was a discussion about um, sort of moving toward the electrification of things and, and really trying to reduce, talk about return on investments, really trying to reduce our outlay on a yearly budgetary for all of our energy costs. And I think that we might have a play there um, in order to create a lot of power in town that we can keep in town in order to reduce those costs into the into the entire future. So conceptually, that's got to be sort of built out, but I'm sure many of us have a few sort of ideas that might not be on this list or, or in a sub list here that 
we all feel are important. So I think I'd like to see us move forward in that direction in uh, some of those with some of those suggestions. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. And uh, Donnie. Uh, yes, uh, in response to Councilman O'Connor, uh, um, the lost revenues, you, there really is no parameters. You can use it on whatever you want. It doesn't have to be, I'm not saying that it shouldn't, but it does not have to be related to COVID. But if you look down towards the bottom, uh, social service programming slash staffing, 130,000 over three years. And uh, Erica and the chief work together. Um, to actually try to respond to exactly what you're asking for. Now, maybe we end up giving them a lot more money, uh, but this would actually be a staffing position that they would be able, the social services and the police to start working on some of these mental health issues. And I know they recommend do not, and I said this to Erica, um, they recommend do not um, use it for one-time expenses because at some point, say after 2024, if you want to say, continue this program and it's very successful, the town then has to pick that up. So that's why they kind of tell you to stay away from those kind of one time. I'm not saying that you have to, but that's why they recommend you stay away from that. But that really is, we talked about the young people, the issues they're going through and really trying to attack that as best we can. That's all I have, Mayor, I'm sorry. Okay, thank you, Bonnie. Um, Mr. Deputy Mayor. Yeah, uh, one more question. Uh, uh, Mark Trahan uh, caught my interest when he talked about how long it might take for a uh, potential, you know, developer to be able to use the funds if we have to uh, allocate the money by uh, 2024, could that money essentially stay in that fund for five, 10 years? Or is there some point where you have to expend it? Um, if I can, th that I don't know, Mark wouldn't know, but I can try to find out. I'm not sure the federal government knows that because we, we are still waiting for further guidelines from the feds who said we'd have them before the end of the year and we still don't have them. Right. I mean, it's like a great concept, but if it takes, you know, a number of years for the right connection to take place, um, you know, I hate to see 600 or even a hundred thousand dollars have to get turned back because right. we, never, we never did find a good use for it. So just, uh, just another question. Thank you. Okay. Bonnie, if I could just share one thing on that. I don't know if the facade improvement program, which is one of the items on our list, um, it's it's one of our most valuable tools and it's woefully underfunded at the moment. Um, if there is, if that could be um, a way station, if you will, for any funding that may not get spent by a certain degree, if we're able to couch it or position in that particular area um, and put it in facade improvement which we have with other things in the past that kind of sit in there. Don't know if that would be, if that's a, a venue or an avenue or not, but that I think um, Deputy Mayor Mazzarell brings up a good question. Um, we do have to wait. We do have some things I would say, Councillor Mazzarell, that um, we can work with today and you'll hopefully, um, Bonnie um, and or the mayor um, uh, and or Kenny will provide the list that we provided today. I think you'll see some things on there that would probably um, um, fit into the camp that you're talking about, but you're right. We need to find a project that works where we can spend the money, but we do need to find a way to maybe put that in a, in a spot where it could be utilized down the road past that 2024. Okay. Thank you, Mark. Uh, Councilman Forrest. Mayor, an alternate, uh, an idea for uh, Councillor Mazza or Deputy Mayor Mazzarella's ideas, which were thoughtful again, um, is you may be able to do an allocation in the alternative, right? So if we allocate for a year, year and a half for EDIC, if they've got the right product, it's ready to go. And then right in that allocation, the alternative, 
if they can't make it happen in a certain amount of time, it goes to these other projects, which would hit right away. So, you know, as that time frame comes up, we're automatically giving avenues for the allocation of the funds, but putting it in, but for using it for the most time we can, but, you know, sort of almost a pre-priority area. And the other uh, thought that sort of came to mind is, and, and this is again from Councillor O'Connor, is, um, you know, we had quite the response, in my opinion, to the, the free COVID tests, um, you know, right now. And I'm curious, even if we have some of this money right now, if we might want to think about allocating that to provide more COVID tests to our citizens and our citizens directly. Um, food for thought for the rest of the council, I'm interested in, the, in your thoughts on that. I'm not sure if we could even, or how we would procure that, but obviously they're procurable. We may want to allocate a piece of that going directly to you know, COVID relief, which would be testing and so on and so forth. And that could be done immediately and would be directly to the cause, uh, directly to Councilor Connor's thoughts. Okay. Definitely something to discuss. Okay. If that's it on this for the ARPA funding, uh, obviously we've got uh, uh, some projects, some ideas, and um, you know, a limited amount of money to be able to do it. But uh, to uh, Councilman Lester's point, this is a uh, you know one, once in a lifetime opportunity, and we should be. Um, you know, treading lightly, but uh, going full forward with it. So, Mayor, can I just ask a quick question? Sure. And I don't want to put words into your mouth, but you want the capital issues um, to go to the um, CIAC, and we will do um, a list for a revised list of this with how many items were already in front of capital improvement, maybe even how long they have been as well as a definition of uh, what would be the potential good for each item for the town. Is that correct? Sounds like it. I mean, it, it covers what uh, Deputy Mayor had asked for CIAC and what uh, Councilman Forrest had mentioned for, uh, you know, more, you know, focused uh, look at those uh, items that you've mentioned in this. Okay, so then we would just have to figure out the non CIP items and whether that goes back to the council at a future date. Mm -hmm. Okay, just so I know. And then we can talk um, after this about uh, uh, forming a subcommittee. I know we've got a number of them going right now. So okay. uh, we, can, uh, we can have that conversation. Uh, Councilman Lester, you and I can talk about that and who we can um, muster up for uh, for that and maybe have a town staff person. Uh, so it's not all falling on top of your shoulders, uh, Bonnie, but uh, maybe you know, Derek's okay. on there. So, you know, first Derek comes to mind, but, uh, you know, if, if we think about it, maybe there's somebody else uh, um, who can do it. Okay, that helps me a lot. Thank you all. I appreciate it. Okay. And um, for those, I think, do we have folks that are on the uh, line for public uh, speaking? I believe we do. Some may be just listening in. Uh, this is uh, obviously it's uh, Zoom, but this is being recorded on uh, our YouTube channel. So if folks are listening on TV, uh, they can uh, watch it on a Zoom channel, it may come in a little bit clearer than on the TV. Um, just simply go on YouTube. I think it's Weathersfield Channel 14 Public Access, and uh, you'll be able to watch there. For those that have called in or are going to be calling in for uh, the public comment portion, uh, our town manager, and I know Derek Sola from IT is there, and I know Cheryl Pierce from the town manager's office is on board as well. Uh, I think all, all of them will be controlling the, the switchboard, trying to get everybody in to uh, comment either on the first or the second public comment portion. Uh, I remind everybody that you have five minutes to speak. Um, those that are watching and want to call in, there is a, um, a call-in number. Um, and I will say it 
and then I will um, also give the code to call in. And I believe this is still the one that you have to press star six to unmute yourself when you do it. Um, but for those that are watching and, and want to call in, 929-205-6099. And when you are prompted, the uh, meeting ID is 976-4009-4544. And then hit the pound sign. And again, uh, when um, the town manager uh, enters or allows you to enter into from the waiting room, uh, please hit star six to unmute yourself. Um, but right now we'll turn it over to the public comment portion. Uh, this is the first one and I remind everybody you have five minutes. Okay, I'm gonna try to do this because I gotta learn at some point. So, um, caller, uh, phone number 860-690-4576. If you wish to speak, please hit star six. Yes, Kevin Sullivan here. Can you hear me okay? Yes. Uh, thank you. Uh, Kevin Sullivan from 79 Wright Road. I'm also a member of Bike Walk Weathersfield. I understand on the agenda tonight is a vote whether to approve applying for a lot chip funding. That's a local transportation and capital investment program. And the funds would be uh, to complete the last gap in the Great Meadows Road Marsh Street project. And that connects uh, Old Wethersfield Village with the Putnam Bridge Trail with sidewalk and bike lanes. I think the prospects are good for this project right now. Uh, I checked right before this meeting and the Putnam Bridge Trail is scheduled by DOT to go out to bid uh, February 2nd. I hope that holds, but the prospects look good. Um, I'm not an expert but with this type of funding, but I understand that no matching funds are required of the town. Uh, there's just uh, the expense of uh, some staff time to prepare the application, uh, so the fiscal impact is not large. Uh, so I just wanted to convey that Bike Walk Weathersfield fully on, uh, supports this project, and we believe that it will bring low-impact sustainable economic development. And we strongly encourage the council to approve uh, submitting an application. And I wanted to thank town engineer uh, Derek Greger for developing the proposal. Thank you very much. Thank you, Kevin. Okay, the next number we have is 860-878-0367. And if you wish to speak, please hit star six. Again, 878-0367. All right, we'll move on to the next number I have, 860-563-6923. Please hit star six. Good evening. Uh, this Hello? is Robert Young from uh, 20 Copper Mill Road in Wethersfield. Um, I had troubles getting on tonight. First of all, I didn't, I wasn't able to hear anything until probably 18 or 19 minutes after the hour. So all, all the discussions you had earlier, I totally uh, could not hear. Um, it doesn't come across on my computer and I wasn't hearing anything because all I heard was music on the telephone, which I'm using right now. It's a telephone. Anyway, as far as all this money goes, um, I got to say that uh, uh, I, I find it very, um, uh, the COVID was sort of a blessing to all the towns and the municipalities across this country. Look at the money that it has brought the towns and municipalities. And now there's going to be a big, many discussions on how we're going to spend it. And uh, um, I, I really, you know, as a taxpayer, and I, every one of you sitting up there are taxpayers, uh, 
and the way this money is going to go is going to be terrible. And I think I have to, um, you know, we know it's going to go. And I would say that, uh, you know, I, I heard Miss Pelletier talking about she wants ROI on, on as many things as possible. And I, I agree with that. Uh, if we're going to spend the money, it should only go where we're going to get good returns on our, on our investment. Um, and, you know, I've, I've been talking to you folks for some time now about a lot of issues. Um, and, and one of the issues I mentioned some time ago, and I haven't mentioned it in a long time, was we have done repairs, overhauls and repairs on some of our buildings. I know they mentioned you mentioned tonight about some roof at, at, the, at the garage. But you also, you know, mismanaged, mismanaged money in the past when you did projects. And... I'm thinking of that, that school, that elementary school over on Willow Street. I can't remember the name of it. But, you know, one of the big pushes when they went to renovate that some 15 years ago, I, I remember going to those meetings. But I can't tell you how long ago it was, but I'm saying 15 years ago. Big thing was the windows were leaking and how air, hot, cold air was coming in and the air conditioning, nice air conditioning air was heading out. Uh, and these, these windows were leaking very heavily. And my understanding is they never were repaired. They never were replaced because of all the mismanagement that this town has performed by the great groups that they've had. So I, I would say one thing you might want to consider, <laughs> spending this money, I, I think it's a good Good investment to to hold our heat in the in the building to hold to hold the you know hold the uh, the cool you know the coolness inside so it doesn't leak outside. I think that's a return on your investment, and I, and I would hope that you would look at other projects as well that you have totally mismanaged, even though you told the public you were going to do this and going to replace that and you never did. I think you should go back and look at some of those items. Uh, another item is that, uh, and I've been talking to you very recently about, is the Keisha Farm. Uh, I, I believe you should spend some money on, on doing some engineering. Maybe you can have your engineers do the engineering work uh, to show us in the public what what that property would yield in building lots for a 55 and over community. Um, I think what we would spend would be a good return on our investment for something like that. For us to get an idea, get our arms around, what kind of return could we get if we spend whatever on engineering costs, and this all, all I'm talking about is uh, schematics and that kind of thing. Uh, it's not a lot. But to show the public what that property would yield, and I think whatever you put into that will, will bring tremendous amounts of ROI back to the town. And don't forget, once it's developed into a 55 and over community by a good de good developer, a good builder, I should say, it will be, for perpetuity, you'll be collecting a lot of taxes. And how much I don't like paying taxes, we, I think we need to use this property for something that gives us a, a good return on our investment. We paid a horrendous price for that property. Absolutely horrendous. But I think if we, the town, developed it and brought in a developer, a, a builder, and worked with him putting up nice homes for 55 and over, I think we would get a great investment back. And the long Mr. Run. Young. So I know I know my time is yep. up, but I did want to I want to keep putting that out on the table, Mayor. You know, you have great opportunities coming up now to put that up on the big screen in the in the uh, in the chambers for us all to look at. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Young. The next phone call uh, message we phone number we have is two zero three nine nine six. 1393 and please hit star six if you wish to speak. Oh, hello, hello this is, yeah. 
we, this is two this is two zero three nine nine six one three nine three. Yeah. Are there two it's people on the oh okay. Sorry, I, Tom. I think yeah, I think that's okay. That's okay. Uh, I think somebody else who was passed over is was wanted to get in first, and I'm more than happy to wait. Okay, hang on one second, Tom. Uh, Bonnie, was there somebody just bef just before Mr. Young? Uh, yes, I was just I was going to name it after uh, this last number, but that's fine. Eight six zero eight seven eight zero three six seven. Hit star six. Hello, this is Hello. Cindy Jacobs. Can, <laughs> can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Uh, thank you. Uh, uh, Cindy Jacobs, 71 Sunrise Terrace, and I just wanted to second Mark Trahan's suggestion uh, for funding uh, the facade program because it has brought return on investment. It's been matched with private uh, monies. I think it is appropriate for the kind of um, old, older buildings, older developments that we have uh, to improve them, uh, and it's been successful. Um, so if we compare the Silas Dean Highway of 20 years ago, um, we would would look at um, a lot of different uh, and improved uh, facades that we see today. And I think that's brought, you know, more business vitality. So I think it's a step and uh, I think it's a tool in our toolkit. And I hope that um, the town uh, will see fit to, to fund um, that program. Thank you. Thank you, uh, to the tune that, that to the tune that <laughs> that uh, perhaps uh, five six hundred thousand uh, dollars and that could be drawn down. Thank you okay. so much. Thank you, and then we got Tom Carson coming up next. Yep, I'm here. Okay, sorry uh, hi, about Tom Carson. Twelve out, twelve out one place. That's fine. That's fine. Um. Yeah, uh, there are a number of items on the agenda that I just wanted to address uh, quickly. Um, the uh, tax incentive policy that uh, I'm a member of EDIC and uh, the, the tax incentive policy, there was a lot of hard work that went into um, devising um, that that uh, policy. And uh, I think it's uh, somewhat of a no brainer, but um, I hope uh, it passes tonight. And, uh, and uh, it, it's just, you know, another tool that the town has to compete with uh, neighboring towns in the region. And, um, and, you know, it's also flexible as well. So it gives the town council some flexibility when it comes to, you know, redeveloping, especially, you know, troubled properties or, or properties that have been um, needing redevelopment for a long time. Um, as far as, as I wanted to uh, concur with Kevin Sullivan just called about the uh, lots at proposal. I thank Derek Greger for putting a lot of work into that design and I think it's very important for the town. Um, we've had a lot of luck recently receiving lots of um, grants and this one is a uh, transformational project I think for the town. Um, one that will connect Old Weathersfield to the Putnam Bridge, also to the Meadows. And, and once it's, and I, I, I mean, I'm, I'm crossing my fingers, but I think we're probably in pretty good shape to, to receive that um, second grant to complete that, that trail all the way to Main Street. Um, it'll be the first thing that people, that they, it's not only great for walkers and bikers in terms of access to that bridge, to the meadows, into Glastonbury and back. Um, it'll be great for economic development reasons. I think once the bridge is open for bikers and walkers, um, you're gonna see a lot of uh, day trippers, cyclists coming from Glastonbury in the old weather's field to spend money um, and time on Main Street. Um, and it'll also be the first thing that everybody sees when, when you come off of 91 and you're taking you know, the old Weathersfield exit into Weathersfield. Um, it'll really clean up that area. Um, I always have a thing about our entrances uh, to town, how we need to do a better job of creating more of a sense of place in Weathersfield when you're entering our town from the north to south, from the highway. 
Um, and it'll be the first thing that people see in cars. We'll see this nice new sidewalk. We'll see, uh, you know, a nice bike lane and it'll get people more curious about the town if they're not from around here. Um, this kind of ties in a little bit to the ARPA funds dis uh, discussion that was just had. I'm very much in favor of transformational projects for Weathersfield. And instead of just checking boxes, I know it's important that we have millions and millions of dollars in projects that um, that we need to fund at some point. But I think when, when Councilman Lesser talks about a once in a generation opportunity, it would be nice to be able to make a splash with some of these funds, as long as they meet the guidelines for projects um, to, do, to give something to the people of Weathersfield and that we can always remember that came out of this COVID funding. I actually think we need to put a lot of money and a lot of work in the Cove Park. Um, right now, that waterfront park pales in comparison as to what, you know, to what they have in Rocky Hill at Ferry Park, what they have in Hartford at Riverfront Park and Charter Oak Landing that we need to do that at Cove Park. That was a park that became tremendously stressed during COVID. And I think it, we need to really clean it up and really make it much more of an, an, a destination. And I think a lot of these funds, I'd like a lot of these funds to be spent there. Um, and finally, and I know this, there's gonna be a separate public hearing on this, but I'll be quick. Uh, I saw on your agenda that you have rules and procedures on there. Um, I think five minutes, of public comment is plenty. And I don't think you need 10 minutes. If you wanna speak in the beginning, that's fine. If you wanna speak at the end, but you guys are all volunteers and there've been plenty of times where people take 10 minutes to talk. And if people wanna talk for 10 minutes on the town council, I think they should run for the town council and be on the town council. But other than that, five minutes is great. All right, thank you for your time. Thank you, Tom. Uh, four minutes and 51 seconds. Not bad. <laughs> Thanks. Appreciate that. You know, you, you bring up some really good ideas. Uh, you know, I, I, I hear you and I think many of us on the uh, council hear you, uh, especially with Cove Park. It, uh, it was a popular destination during the uh, pandemic. It still is. Uh, but, uh, you know, we got to put some resources into it to, to make it top notch, I think. So appreciate that. We got another call. Anybody else lined up for this first comment? Um, I believe we've hit everybody. Thank you, Mayor. Okay. And if we missed anybody, there is, uh, as Tom said, and as we all know, a second um, opportunity to speak at the end. So, um, and actually, I do want to apologize when I stepped away earlier on at seven o'clock exactly. Um, I did not have a six month old puppy the last time we were doing a uh, Zoom uh, virtual town uh, council meeting. Uh, he did not like the fact that he was created while my wife was taking my son to a hockey practice. So um, I had to relieve him. I thought you guys did the Pledge of Allegiance. I do apologize for missing the Pledge of Allegiance. It wasn't on purpose in the beginning. Um, I guarantee that we will be doing it at the beginning of the next meeting. So my apologies for that. Um, let's see. And we go down. No other comments. Uh, hearings on ordinances and resolutions. And uh, as we all saw, there is uh, at the end of our agenda, the tax incentive policy uh, for the town of Weathersfield. That is, uh, you know, we discussed it uh, at the last meeting. Um, it is up for a public hearing this time around. Is there anybody who wants to speak on behalf of this um, tax policy? I guess, well, I don't, I don't know how we would find out if they wanted to speak on it or not, if they are muted. I can go through, I can go through it again, Mayor. You know, I mean, Mr. Trahan, do you want to speak as chair? Sure. Um, uh, hopefully you guys have all received the packet. Uh, again, I'm Mark Trahan, chair of the EDIC RDA, 21 Robinswood Drive. Um, Bonnie, I'm gonna ask you uh, in case I breach any protocol, 
which many of you may know is one of my favorite pastimes to keep me uh, on rails. Um, I'm here tonight to formally bring forward uh, the EDIC proposed tax incentive program revisions. And if you will look at, and I, hopefully you guys may have the items that we shared. Um, do you guys have the packet and the data that we shared over the last month by chance and with you? If you have uh, the December 13th uh, town council agenda item, which came from me um, and through Bonnie, um, you should have received a history and background material on the present tax incentive policy, copy of the present tax incentive policy and a copy of the revised tax incentive policy. And I really just wanted to steer you towards the, there's a document that came uh, from Pete Gillespie that we crafted on November 8th, 2021, um, which outlines all the proposed revisions um, that we have. Um, there, uh, it's items one through 14. And there's a few of them that I just wanted to highlight uh, to you. Um, one uh, that I think are the most, uh, well, they're all important, but I think the, the most important is on page two of the, again, the documented dated November 8th, 2021, item three on eligibility, minimum inc increased assessment of 100,000 required in order to qualify uh, for the program. Formerly, it was $25,000 to get involved with the tax abatement. You just had to show that you were doing $25,000 of improvements uh, to the property. Um, what we're doing, the policy now states that the, the tax abatement is based on the increased assessment of the property. And in order to get into the club, so to speak, and to utilize this, there has to be a minimum of $100,000 required in order to qualify for the program. Um, item four, and again, on that document dated November 8th, 2021, uh, the abatement schedule was revising the abatement schedule for real estate so that it's based upon the, again, the increased property assessment versus the cost of the project improvements. Sometimes project improvements don't necessarily increase the value uh, of the property. Um, in the new revision, um, it's clearly designed on whatever improvements they're making to the property. Um, the abatement is, again, based on the improved uh, value of the property. Um, to continue on on section eight, there's a number of general requirements that were added to this item. Um, item A, employment of residents, residents, uh, contractors or minority veteran disabled groups in order for the redevelopment uh, or development of the project. Um, incorporate alternative or sustainable energy and green technology. Um, redevelop distressed, blighted or abandoned properties, which Weathersfield we're blessed right now. It's very different landscape, no pun intended, than it was 10 years ago. We're running out of projects, luckily, in town, but we still have a couple of white elephants that we need to conquer. Uh, and some of the items that I shared again uh, with Councilman uh, Lesser and with the mayor um, and with Bonnie, uh, please pass those on to the rest of the uh, members of the town council. Um, we'll help in the distressed, blighted, uh, or abandoned property category. Um, Financial need, um, item F provides a product or service needed by the community um, and G renovation of historic structures. All those things were very important. Those were added uh, to the revision. And probably the most one or most important to the council is item 13, uh, section seven on their town council authority, added provisions that the council under unusual or extraordinary circumstances may alter any of the provisions of this policy. So at the end of the day, even though I think we have a very thoughtful proposal, I think we had a pretty good tax incentive policy before we looked at it. I think it needed to be dusted off and some modifications made to be more competitive to other communities. Um, but at the end of the day, uh, the council um, has the final say and can make adjustments uh, to this particular uh, um, piece. Um, again, we're here seeking your approval tonight. Um, if you have any questions or comments, um, I'm more than happy. Thank you, Mark. Uh, anybody have any questions for Mark on this? I think we've all seen it for the last uh, two council meetings. Um, this is the hearing on it. So uh, we'll take a look and uh, I believe we act on it uh, at uh, next week's or the second meeting of January. I don't know if there's anybody from the public who wants to speak on behalf of this. Mayor, if you wish, I could just go through the phone numbers again. Sure, if there's just a handful. 
Bonnie. Yep, uh, 860-690-4576. If you wish to speak in favor, uh, star six. No comment in this matter, thank you. Okay, um, Eric, uh, phone number 860-878. 0367, if you wish to speak in favor, hit star six. Well, you, you could speak against Bonnie. <laughs> yeah, I could say. <laughs> favor or against. That was great. What a lineup. Seven, if you don't approve. Hey. <laughs> um, if you want, I'll go on to the next number, 860-563-6923. If you wish to speak in favor, please hit star six. Uh, I'll pass, Bonnie. Thank you. Thank you, Bob. I think that's it. Yes, unless you want to see if anyone wants to speak against. Speak now or forever hold your peace. I think we're good on the public hearing of that. Um, we'll move over right now to reports from boards and commissions. Any uh, councilmen, councilwomen have any reports from boards or commissions to report? Councilman Mazar, uh, Deputy Mayor Mazarell. Uh Planning and zoning. <clears throat> and the uh, uh, December 21st planning and zoning meeting, they uh, moved the uh, site plan modifications or reapplication, I'm not sure how it's termed, for 1210 Silestine Highway, which is the former site of uh, Puritan Furniture, and it will now be the home of uh, Porter and Chester School, which is located on the Silestine Highway in Rocky Hill, just over the line. Uh, that was originally intended to be two medical office buildings one of which has been constructed. I don't believe it's completed yet. And uh, the, the owner had an opportunity to uh, offer his property to a school. So it's been redesigned and some parking lot changes. And like I said, that got approved. I also wanted to bring up uh, an issue that uh, uh, the planning and zoning had created a moratorium on uh, uh, the sale and distribution of medical and recreational marijuana on uh, November 16th. And they have a six month moratorium on that. And they're asking for town council's input as to uh, what the temperature, if you will, is of the council regarding uh, having a, a outright ban on sale of uh, marijuana in town or some regulations as to limiting the type in areas and so forth. So planning and zoning is, is uh, intending on um, drafting regulations that would regulate the uh, sale and distribution. And uh, they don't wanna go through that whole effort if the council is considering a outright ban uh, in town. They're also asking for input from uh, police department and, and other departments. So I just put that out there. Uh, maybe we could schedule that for a future meeting as a, an item of discussion. That's all I had. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Deputy Mayor. Any other uh, reports from boards or commissions? Councilman O'Connor. I thank you, Mayor. I had an opportunity to, to sit in on my first Keisha Farms committee meeting and I just wanted to share that it is their intent to have a preliminary uh, proposal or recommendation, I should say, uh, to the council for review in early March. And so a lot of due diligence is being done on their part. Uh, they broke into separate subcommittees focusing on the recreational aspect, the farming and gardens aspect. And they even dedicate a section just to the community concerns to address things like traffic, costs, maintenance, things of that nature. So uh, I'm eager to see what they come back with, but it was a productive meeting. And so I just wanted to share that. Great. 
Thank you, Councilman. Um, any other comments from anybody? Okay, seeing none, move on to the uh, discussion items. There are no discussion items tonight. Council action workshop items for referral. We do not have any of those. We do have, I believe, one resignation and one appointment tonight. Uh, Deputy Mayor Mazzarello, do you have the resignation? Yes, so I'll make a motion to accept the resignation of John Gustafson. 182 Amherst Street, a uh, term of 10 21 19 to 6 30 23 from the Zoning Board of Appeals. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, nay or any abstentions on this appointment or uh, resignation? You're hearing none? Okay, motion carries. Councilman Lesser. I think, I think it's Councilman point. Forrest. What, Matt, or do you want? Sure. Um, Thank I'll you. Move, I'll move Tony Homicky to the Fair Rent Commission as a landlord, 223 Garden Street from a period of 1422 to 63024. Second. Discussion on this appointment? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Ayes have it, motion carries. Okay, thank you. And sorry, I don't have the, the walk-in in front of me. I, I do know it, I just didn't know who it was uh, to be proposed by. Uh, item B3, this is where, uh, we have Derek Greger and, and we've heard uh, both from two callers tonight about the low SIP funds. Uh, this is the connect connectivity of Old Weathersfield to um, not only the Putnam Bridge, but Eastern Connecticut over the river. Uh, phase one has uh, already been completed. This is uh, um, what we're looking at tonight would be phase two. Uh, which would connect those areas in Old Weathersfield to and and beyond Old Weathersfield to um, Great Meadows and Marsh Street area it includes, if you looked in your packet, some uh, widening of some um, streets uh, as well as crosswalk areas, sidewalks, and um, ultimately a um, path towards Great Meadow uh, where I-91 exit ramp uh, comes off and uh, folks get into the meadows down there by um, 100 Putnam Park. Uh, I can't do it justice, so that's why we have Derek Greger, our town engineer, uh, here tonight to be able to talk a little bit further about this project and answer any questions that uh, councilmen um, or councilwomen have. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, good evening, everyone on council. Um, so I'm here tonight, and I think uh, the mayor did a really good job of explaining the project, but I'll go through it uh, briefly just to uh, make sure everyone's up to speed. So uh, LOTSIP is Local Transportation Capital Improvement Program funds. Um, they're funds from DOT. They're administered by Capital Region Council of Governments, also known as CROG. Uh, we have applied in the past in 2018, the solicitation then, we were awarded two projects for reconstruction of Olka Hill Road, which is scheduled for this year, and Highland Street Pavement Rehab, which has been completed. Um, they did another solicitation in 2020. We were awarded um, phase one of uh, Heritage Way Trail Improvements, which is related to this project, which I'll go through in a little bit. With this program, funds um, are 100% for construction. Uh, town is responsible for paying design costs with this particular program. If I can uh, share my screen, I will uh, go through a few plans. Can everyone see that? Yes. 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 Okay. Great. All right. <clears throat> so this is an overall plan of the Heritage Way bikeway. If you're not familiar with it, um, it, it starts down here in southeast end of town near the 1860 reservoir. It's the red line that winds 
um, northward through town, <clears throat> basically up to Cumberland Avenue, uh, comes around by the cove, and then uh, continues along the river uh, into the meadows. So this area highlighted in yellow is the, the project area we're talking about, which contains um, a good portion of the bike trail that we're looking to improve. The next plan I'm showing here is uh, this is the first phase that was recently, um, we were awarded funding. We, we were awarded about $720,000 for construction of this phase. Um, currently we're working on a survey work that's being completed so we can start design, which would be done in house. Uh, generally this project is along Great Meadow Road here at the far right side is the uh, Route 3 overpass with the bridge. What you see here in white is what DOT will be constructing as part of their trail coming down off the bridge and in a parking lot. So our project originated at that location. Um, we're installing new concrete sidewalks along the north and east side of Great Meadow Road all the way up to Burbank Road. And then we're turning down uh, Great Meadow beneath the I-91 overpass uh, crossing the ramps. And we terminated the project at Hart Street. In addition to the new sidewalks, we do some restriping for bike lanes, share rows. Um, when we priced out both phase one and phase two initially, it exceeded the maximum amount we could apply for, which was at the time $1 million, So, which is why we phased it. So we stopped phase one at Hart Street, which is um, existing part of the trail, at least to get that far, um, with the anticipation that we would come back at a later date and uh, look for funding to complete phase two. So the next plan um, I'm showing you will be our phase two plan as it stands right now. Um, up here at the top of the screen is Hart Street. This is where you see in, in white where phase one was ending. Um, with this project, we're looking to just continue the concrete sidewalk um, along Marsh Street, along the existing wood guide rail that's there. Um, in order to do that, we're gonna have to do some road widening in this area. So this stretch um, of Marsh Street after you go around the turn here from uh, physical services facility will be widened a little bit to make room for the sidewalks. Um, sidewalks will continue around on the north side of the road um, to the Broad Street intersection and, and then make a connection to where the existing walk terminates in front of the cemetery. Um, same, similar to the other part of the project, we're also going to be doing some restriping. Um, in this area, we should be able to put um, have enough space to put bike lanes in, do some drainage and guide rail improvements. Um, one thing we wanted to look at while we were doing this is to make some improvements down at Broad Street. So this is all very conceptual, um, but if you're familiar with this area, we have a current uh, pedestrian crossing or crosswalk right here that doesn't go to any sidewalk. It uh, goes really to the driveway of the cemetery and it's very poor sight lines. Um, it's a safety concern we have. So with this project, we are looking at maybe teeing up Broad Street like you see here, putting in a, a crosswalk across Broad Street and then an additional sidewalk here in the island, maybe to get our crossing a little bit closer to the curve here where there'd be better sight lines in each direction. Um, whether you're on the north or south side of the road, you'd better see traffic approaching. So it's very conceptual at this point. There'll be you know public information means to talk a little bit more about this, but that has been worked into the project at this point, um, as well as we continue the project um, going west to the Main Street and Church Street intersection. Um, one thing we're considering here to, that we're looking at is maybe narrowing um, the two lanes to one. Um, we've had some complaints about sight lines when there's multiple vehicles with a vehicle taking a right and vehicles going straight through the intersection. Sometimes vehicles traveling south don't see that vehicle going straight and there's incidents. So that's something we have to look at more traffic counts to get some more data on. But right now, that's a preliminary thought that we may, may narrow that. So we're going to just include that cost in the project that we're putting together now. Um, in general, these projects tend to rate pretty well if you can somehow tie them to existing state funded projects. Um, we have a couple here. We, we talked about the fact that DOT has their um, trail project that's coming this year. We already have phase one um, funded. And what you see over here on the left side of the screen is part of our community connectivity grant projects that are currently in design and anticipated for construction this year, which are also some bicycle pedestrian improvements. So this is really um, you know, sandwiched in between uh, some other state funded projects. So uh, I'm hopeful that it will rate pretty well um, for that reason. Um, so uh, that's why I'm recommending we submit. Um, this whole phase one and phase two of this project is consistent with the DOT's 
2014 feasibility study that was done for the area or for the region really. And this was one of the recommended projects that came out of it. The maximum uh, cost we can apply for is up to, they've increased it to 1.2 million. Um, we're still working on the co exact cost, but I'm, we're thinking it's the 700 to $800,000 range. So I think it's gonna be a comparable size project to the phase one. Um, right now we're anticipating staff will be able to do the design with, with some limited help from consultants. So um, as I stated earlier, the funding is 100% for construction. The town's responsible for design. So I'm hoping to be able to do that with our staff. Uh, applications for this are due January 19th, um, which is why I'm here tonight to seek approval to move forward with the application um, and have that sent into crop. So with that, I'd be happy to answer any questions anyone might have. Uh, I can't see everybody. So if anybody does have a question for Derek, if you want to uh, just ask a question, go right ahead. Derek, uh, Derek <clears throat> Mike, uh, Mayor, if this is all right. Just... Yes. Uh, Derek, and according to the pictures, and I, I don't know if we went through this in the previous discussion, but it looks like some of the way is going to be abutting directly like Marsh Street, I guess, in part of it. So I have that right? Yes. And Great Meadow Road. So is there any, deline aside from striping, is there any delineation between the people on the roadway and the passengers and, and the passengers and the bike and the bike people? I mean, it's always sort of that we're always riding on the road. There's with some type of a barrier or divider or whether it could even be plants, right? There's sort of an increased amount of safety than sort of being right on the shoulder. Is there any concepts for that? Or that has that been floated or is that or is that possible even? It's always been yeah. the bikers you know, sharing them with the high, you know, speed traffic and just cars is difficult, dangerous. Yeah, and that, that's certainly understandable. Um, you know, there, there are ways of doing that, although it's not really feasible for a lot of our applications, just given how narrow the right of way is and how narrow the roads are. Um, in addition to have a physical barrier between your bike lanes and your, and your traffic also creates problems with drainage and snow plowing and things of that nature. So, I mean, we do try to you know, maximize the width where we can. Four feet, three to four feet is usually a minimum. If we can get five or six, we do. Um, I think in this stretch of phase two, we will have, because we're going to do some road widening as part of it, we will be, a bit, be able to um, provide decent sized shoulders. I did mention sharrows for phase one, which is striping in the traffic lanes, basically telling uh, you know, motorists that they have to share, share the lane with uh, Bicycles, and, and the reason why in phase one we have some of those areas is because it, it's so narrow. We have guide rail on both sides of the road. It would be prohibitively expensive to move those out. So we're working within the existing constraints that we have. So, I mean, that, that ideally would be great, but it doesn't work in a lot of applications um, for what we're doing in town. And we're at least making the effort to go as far as either A, providing some shoulders where they can ride a little bit more safer the narrower travel lanes do try to work as a traffic calming measure to slow traffic. Um, and also whenever we have the opportunity, and this might be one of the projects where we actually identify it as a bike lane, put up more signage, some more striping because it's part of our heritage way trail. Okay, if there's opportunity though, um, and I'm not saying they have to be like, you know, four foot dividers, right? But if there is some opportunity to divide and provide some more safety, maybe in a cost-effective way, of course, um, I would encourage you to try to do so. Absolutely. And, uh, but it's, overall, it's a great project, and I'm absolutely going to vote for it. Councilman O'Connor. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Hey, uh, Derek, first off, thank you for this. I absolutely uh, am excited to see this thing come to fruition. I think it's a really cool idea. It's a great project, and I think the town does benefit from it. Uh, I do have a suggestion though, and that intersection of Church Street and Main Street, if you bring that down to one lane, I think we're gonna create a massive backup because a lot of traffic comes off of 91 to go to DMV and they take that right-hand turn. And with the amount of foot traffic that's going on in Old Weathersfield now, you know, you're gonna have a huge backup waiting for people who may be taking a left to go, you know, towards the Silas scene or down Main Street. 
And if you only have one lane there, I think you're going to cause a serious backup. Just my thoughts having traveled that a zillion times. So. Yes, we would we would need to do some traffic evaluation. I may need a consultant to assist with that to evaluate if that's if that's going to be an issue or not, because that would be the concern. So I agree. Valid point. Councilman Hill. Uh, thanks, Mayor. And I, and I think uh, Councilor O'Connor really put it best. This is extremely exciting project. So I, you know, Derek, I want to just thank you and your team for um, kind of the, the forward looking nature of all of this. This project um, checks a lot of boxes uh, in town, um, expands our walkable footprint here in Old Weathersfield. It connects us um, you know, that makes it much safer to walk from Old Weathersfield, uh, not only down into the meadows, but it'll be able to connect us down not only to Rocky Hill, but over the bridge uh, into Glastonbury. And uh, Mr. Carson from EDIC made a great point that I, I had neglected to think of was, you know, that is a, a major entrance into our town coming off the exit there. And it currently is, um, to, to put it kindly, is, is very tired looking. Uh, you have a lot of brush that comes over the barriers the steel girders that comes actually into the lane, those have to be cut down quite a bit. So cleaning that up as much as we can and making it kind of more appealing as folks enter into our town is gonna to, is going to be great for um, uh, just economic development and tourism in general. So Derek, I just wanna thank you and your team for putting this forward here. And I'm uh, looking forward to supporting it. Well, thank you. Mr. Deputy Mayor. Yeah, one question. Um, so if I understand this correct, the, the, uh, in the first slide, the two sections in yellow are what we're talking about. And um, what would happen if the state decided not to move forward with the bridge, uh, pedestrian bridge connection? Will all of the improvements that we're going to put in still be completed or are we relying on some of the state work to connect the uh, the way to the meadows yeah I, don't, I mean it's it's it would be nice it's part of this project is connect to that dot project however uh, even without it this is still along our our bikeway um there will be a connection to the meadows um uh, you know do this project with dot has been around a while we've had numerous discussions about maintenance and um, other things related to it. So as was stated earlier, it's my understanding as well that they are really uh, on the cusp of moving forward with that. Um, it's actually running a little late. They were supposed to be working on this last year, but things got delayed. So I I'm at this point, at least from what I've heard from DOT, I'm confident they're moving forward with it. And with the timing of all this, um, you know, we'll, we'll probably have an answer to that if they're moving forward or not prior to us even starting construction on phase one. So all that will be fleshed out before we, we start work. But either way, I think it is a benefit along our trail. And then the other question I had, is there a time limit on spending the LOSIP money on a project? If the say, say the bridge part of it got delayed for you know several years, do we still get to use that money when the project finally moves forward or? Yeah, they don't have very strict timelines on the funding. Um, they do always encourage projects to move as quickly as you can. Um, you know, I mentioned Walka Hill Road that was funded in 2018 and we're going to be building in 2022. So it's not uncommon that it takes a number of years. Um, so I'm not too concerned about that. Even with phase one, they've been pretty flexible with most projects from what I've seen. Thanks, sir. Any other questions for Derek? Uh, Derek, I just got a couple of questions, but before I start, uh, yeah, I must concur. This is a um, it's a great project uh, connecting phase one and phase two together. Uh, as somebody who goes down into the meadows uh, and has ridden their bike underneath ninety one, and uh, and I got to say thank you for reaching out to DOT. Uh, and emailing the council tonight about the uh, the debris um, that is down there. So uh, as it is a, a gateway to not only Old Weathersfield, but all of Weathersfield, anything we can do to improve that area uh, it is great. And, um, you know, even though we may not get uh, immediately or if ever the connection to the pedestrian walk 
uh, um, walk bridge or a pedestrian bridge over uh, the river, uh, it does still connect to the, the paper lanes or paper roads in, uh, in the meadows that go down to uh, Rocky Hill. So um, it is definitely something that uh, the pedestrians and uh, um, you know, avid uh, um, environmentalists have been asking for and uh, I think would be a great welcome to uh, the town. Um, just a simple question, and, and I may have it wrong. Uh, looking at the portion that has Broad Street, and uh, I do like the idea of straightening out that Broad Street to Marsh Street intersection. As somebody who, like Councilman O'Connor, has driven by that millions of times, um, it is dangerous when you're you're parked there and you're making a left to go um, westbound on Marsh Street and you can barely see what's coming around that corner. Um, but my question is right next to it, there's uh, that little island that has the welcoming to welcome to Weathersfield sign. It says six foot wide concrete sidewalks in there. Is there a reason why there's six feet in that little island? Yeah, I mean, th this is very conceptual still, but we, uh, we've we done, done recent work. Um, I think we did the island recently at State Street and uh, Hartford Avenue a number of years ago, uh, only for maintenance. I know physical services tends to plow the walks. So as we did with that island, we put the walks a little bit wider um, to make it the Jeeps easier to get on it and be able to clear it. Um, it was just put in that way at this point. I, I know that the island has some significance and uh, I think some people will have some thoughts on what we should or shouldn't do with it. Um, that's why I'm, you know, I'm saying it's, it's conceptual and we'll, we'll have some discussions about it, but that was the reason it was put wider to begin with. It's just a maintenance uh, operation for physical services. Gotcha. And I, I figured just as much, which leads me to my final question, maintenance of uh, these uh, uh, sidewalks and um, walking paths. Now, is this, would this be up to the town now? Because uh, they're all on town property. Um, I'm just looking at Marsh Street now and, and as we round the corner and then come down to uh, Great Meadow, I mean, we're adding, I don't know how many more feet, maybe even miles to um, necessary improvements or maintenance for our town staff. Um, and it goes back to that old, you know, springtime concern from everybody is that, you know, we, we do put the Jeeps on these sidewalks and uh, the tires cut a rut parallel to the sidewalks. And we always talk to Sally and physical services goes out and um, topsoil and, and seeds them. You know, if it's going to be a problem, for the town, do, or is there going to be a problem for the town, or do you think we would be able to cover it with existing staff to be able to maintain these sidewalks? A lot of these walks are going to be town responsibility. Um, not not all of them. We do have a couple of properties there that we've talked with the property owners, and there'll be some responsibility for them as well. Um, this this was discussed, you know, with physical services at one point. So yes, it will be more maintenance. Um, as far as equipment to do, I, I'm not sure. We'll have to work that out with them on what's going to be the easiest for them to maintain on how we how we design it so that those are conversations we'll have. Okay. Thank you, Derek. Yeah, I think uh, including uh, council on some of those comments because, you know, I know we take uh, uh, field some questions from constituents, especially in the wintertime about uh, conditions of sidewalks and uh, delays in either uh, uh, clearing off the snow for them or the conditions after snow and uh, in the spring thaw. So um, yes, please include us on any of those conversations. Any other questions for Derek on this? Hearing none, is there a motion? I'll make a motion, uh, if no one else wants to, to approve the application of the lots of grant for the phase two heritage way trail improvement project 
along Great Meadows Road and Marsh Street with an estimated project cost not to exceed $1.2 million. Second. Motion's been made and seconded. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Any abstentions? Motion carries. Thank, Thank you, Darren. Okay, thanks. And this is another one that is familiar to us. This is item B4. Uh, I believe Kate Forcier is on uh, the Zoom with us. This is the Housing Authority funds for uh, CDBG uh, block grant funding. And this is uh, the project that she came in in December and told us about with the pipes that are uh, buckling through the concrete slab and then lifting up some of the tiles uh, at Fuller um, uh, Complex. So um, is Kate on? Yep, I see you down there. Yes, I'm on. And um, yeah, if you want to just kind of give a brief uh, review of this and then some of the changes that have come um, before us uh, with the, uh, the new language about the uh, amount of funds necessary for design and uh, engineering, as well as uh, what uh, your intended uses is for or are for the um, remaining uh, funds. Sure. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, yes, the Housing Authority has plans with the town to have a future application for federal CDBG funds to do a major renovation project on the Fuller Apartments. Um, however, in the meantime, the State Department of Housing um, is kind of uncomfortable with the problem that we have there and wants to have an engineering report to uh, report to them the cause of the problem as well as a permanent solution to it before they will consider an application uh, the, for the larger project. But in the meantime, in order to apply for uh, CDBG funding, um, the town cannot have more than a certain threshold of program income funds. Uh, the town has more than that threshold right now. So the Housing Authority has proposed to spend a good sum of them um, to first create the engineering report along with the costs um, to investigate so that the engineers can uh, make their determination and create this report for the state. And then to spend, um, just to carve out a small portion of the bigger project just to spend down these program income funds to the lo level that uh, the DOH would um, eventually entertain a future application. Okay. Um, what, we've, what we've discovered since I met with you last is um, last time I showed you some pictures and reported to you on some cuts into the slab that showed that the piping was laid higher up in the cement than the design of the school was. And that was an area that was deteriorating. Um, we've also cut areas of the slab where there's been no deterioration and found that the piping was much lower into the slab, so that may have protected it. However, there's another area that the pipe is also too high in the slab, but there's been no problems, but there's a large expanse of, of window in that community space that probably is heating that area and drying up some of that groundwater. Um, what we've also discovered today is that the school closed in 1981, but the renovation of the building didn't happen until 1986. So perhaps that period of time where the building was not being used um, and not being heated and cooled, that that may have had an effect in accelerating the deterioration of that plumbing. You know, I don't have the engineer's report yet. Um, that piece of information on the time frame that the building was empty plays a role in the um, conclusion the engineer is coming to. Um, and once he 
provides his report. It will be provided to the State Department of Housing for their satisfaction and allowing us to apply for a CWG grant down the road. Okay. And then the uh, excess funding to spend down uh, 70,880. Correct. Um, my understanding is the town has some plan to spend a little bit of, it above, of, it, of it above that. Bonnie could probably address that uh, so that the threshold is met. Okay. Bonnie, yes, I saw you we are, go up. We're having some issues with some past housing program rehab money projects. Um, which have been reported to HUD. So I am in the midst of having those corrected. There's one especially I think will really cost, take, uh, cost some money, which is a roof repair that never was done correctly. So I want to make sure I have money to repair that. Okay. And then um, as we spend this money down, uh, when would the next allocation from uh, either uh, State Department of Housing or HUD. I don't know who would uh, provide the funding to us in the next go around, but when would the next uh, CDBG grant be coming in? The applications are due usually in April. I'm not sure whether we'll make it for April of 2022 because I don't know how long the DOH will take to examine this report and find it satisfactory. And in the meantime, there's still some work to do to put an application together um, and we will have to update some of the environmental testing that had previously done, been done uh, because it can't be more than six months old. Um, and we'll have to get revised cost estimates because the cost estimates that we have were in preparation for the 2019 grant um, and we all know that construction materials have gone up considerably since that time. And in addition, CHFA would want to add some energy efficiencies on, um, especially a generator for that building. Um, we don't know yet to what degree that generator would be functioning. Um, so I'm not really sure if this would push us into the um, area where a CWG fund alone is not sufficient to cover it and that they would have to combine it with some of the state flex monies. Uh, but the application the town makes on behalf of the Housing Authority, for instance, to the state of Connecticut, the state of Connecticut gets the money from the federal government, but the state is the one that manages the program. Okay. Bonnie? Uh, yes. Also, we need to do a request for proposal. Uh, we certainly, uh, we are currently, I'm sorry, using a consulting company to help us with these uh, CDBG applications, community consulting, their term is up. Um, so I have requested the request for proposal that was used last time. I now have to go out for that and we have to interview. So we've got some uh, time in front of us to even do that. Plus what Kate has to get done. Okay. My, my assumption mayor is that it's probably unlikely that we could actually put an application in by a of April of 2022 with all of this um, needing to be done in advance. So it's more than likely that that full application would be April of 23. Gotcha. Okay. Any questions for either Kate or Bonnie on this? Seeing none. I don't know if there is an actual motion, Bonnie, or would there this resolution- is a, I hate to say this, but there is a resolution which is given to us by the state. And when we do this, I would rather err on the side of caution and somebody's got to read it. So and it would uh, start on the whereas the town of Wethersfield. You'd have to read that. The public notice as well, Bonnie? Pardon? Do I read the public notice as well? No, 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 just the resolution. The resolution. Deputy Mayor, that'd be great. Anybody else, Mike, before I read this thing? I don't believe so. Okay. No mask tonight, Mr. Deputy Mayor, so your glasses shouldn't fog up. Glasses on. I'm good. 
Okay. Whereas the town of Wethersfield has received funds under the Connecticut Small Cities Community Development Block Grant CDBG program administered by the State of Connecticut Department of Housing pursuant to Title I of the Housing and Community Development Act of 1974 as amended. And whereas the town of Wethersfield has expended those funds pursuant to Title I of the Housing and Community Development Act of 1974, <clears throat> the Code of Federal Regulations and Assistance Agreement, and whereas those funds received by the town of Wethersfield had, have generated program income. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the Wethersfield Town Council, one that is cognizant of the conditions of the use of the program income as prescribed by Title 24, Part 570, Section 489E of the Code of Federal Regulations. Two, that it realizes program income is governed by Title I of the Housing and Community Development Act of 1974. Three, that it may use program income only for the following activities. A, <clears throat> the activities that generate the program income if the activity continues to meet the requirements of Title I of the Housing and Community Development Act of 1974. B, any additional activity that meets the requirements of Title I of the Housing and Community Development Act if the town receives DOH written approval to fund it with program income. Four, that it may use program income to fund administrative and program soft costs within the following limits. Administrative costs, 8%. Total administrative and program soft costs, housing rehabilitation activities only, 20%. Total administrative and program soft costs, all activities except for housing rehabilitation, 20%. And five, that it hereby amending, that it is hereby amending the program income plans that was adopted for the original activity that generated the program income to permit the funding of additional activities from the program income. Nothing else follows. Thank you. Uh, okay. Motion has been made and seconded. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Any abstentions on this? Ayes have it. Motion carries. Thank you, Kate. And thank you, Deputy Mayor, for reading that into the record for us. And thank you very much. Um, before we go over uh, into uh, the rules and procedures on item B5, um, if we could, can we bring up the tax incentive uh, policy by EDIC and uh, take that one um, just ahead of the order? I don't know if I have to open the agenda to, to switch the order or if we can simply switch the order of the items. Um, but uh, if nobody has a problem with taking up the tax incentive policy um, for uh, economic development, item B6, we can move that uh, just ahead. And then I think we, is Mark still on? I know jo uh, uh, Councilman Lesser. No, I was gonna say, Mayor, that's fine to, to change it. I was going to make a motion, but if you were gonna have Mark or Joya say something, I'll, I'll, I'll wait. I'll ask the parliamentarian, Councilman Forrest, do we need to <laughs> open the agenda to not open the agenda, but uh, make a motion to move one item over the other? Or is you it know, council? You got, two, you got two options here, Mayor. The first is you could do a motion to table, and that does, that's the original motion table, which means you just put it on the table, you take up the next item, and then the first one comes right back. Like it's not like motion table until next thing. You could do that. It's non uh, non arguable if you want to get that done. Your second thing is. You could just say, I'm, I'm going to order, which is probably the one you're going to pick. Um, I'm going to order that we're going to move five to six to five. Do I have any objections? And you just act it, and it would act as a consent with no objections. If you get an objection, you got to I would move. agree with um, Mr. Forrest, too. <laughs> B. <laughs> you B. just need okay. to say that you want to. We'll, we'll move, we'll uh, switch item B six for item B5, B5 for item B6. Uh, any opposition? Carrying none, unanimous. Okay, so moved. 
thank you both Kenny and uh, and Matt for that. Uh, Joya, I think you are on. I don't know if Mark is still on. No, Mark, uh, he's no longer here, Mayor. Okay. Joya, the floor is yours on this. This is uh, something obviously we had seen um, in, earlier. And all we need to, do we have to move this? Let's see, I'm just yeah. trying to. I'm happy to make a motion, Mayor. Okay. Well, um, did Joy have any comments, Bonnie? Uh, no, I mean, I think that the council has heard that these are the changes that are recommended by the Commission, Economic Development Commission, as well as Attorney Slater. And I think it really cleans up issues that um, EDIC and the town has had with past um, agreements with developers. And this will really help us a lot, make this program much smoother. Gotcha. Okay, Councilman Lesser. Thank you, Mayor. I motion to approve the recommended changes to 2004 tax incentive policy as recommended by the Economic and Development Commission, as well as the town attorney. Second. Okay. Uh, motion has been made and seconded. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, nay. I have it. Motion carries. Okay, thank you. Now going back up to what was item B5, now item B6. This is the rules and procedures uh, item for us. Just bear with me as I move up. Um, and again, uh, if you guys remember at the last meeting, uh, Councilman uh, Lesser and Deputy Mayor Tom Ezra, you know, joined together to discuss this. I think Bonnie, you sat in on some of those and um, came up with uh, some changes to the rules and uh, procedures for our council meetings. Uh, this goes back a couple years ago when we had changed the uh, ways council meetings were conducted. We had um, just a single council meeting, um, no workshop meeting, and they were twice a month, um, same time, so, you know, first and third Mondays, but we did have committee meetings, and uh, I believe there were four, maybe five shared services, budget and finance, uh, infrastructure, public safety, and maybe public works, if I remember correctly. Um, those committees meet, uh, met, but uh, we changed it into a workshop meeting. And, uh, you know, I may turn it over to Deputy Mayor Mazzarella as this was one of his ideas to, to kind of streamline how we were doing our uh, committee meetings. And um, he kind of took the ball with this um, over the last couple of weeks to try and get it uh, before us tonight in the uh, form that it is. And, I don't know if I want to put you on the spot so quickly. Um, well, I, I can go through it if you want. I think we've talked about it. And uh, I did want to clarify one, one comment that we heard from the public tonight about 10 minutes of public speaking. And I think there might be a little confusion because the 10 minutes only applies to a uh, a public meeting and hearing where uh, you're allowed to speak for 10 minutes and it actually just continues to go and go as, as long as you want. You, you can speak through the, uh, the order of people that are in the, at the hearing and you can continue to speak numerous times um, for 10 minutes. The only, the only other change we made, we clarified some of the language with the public comment section where you're allowed five minutes at the beginning of the meeting. And again, five minutes at the end of the meeting, you're not allowed to speak twice, you know, consecutively. Um, but basically what um, Councilor Lester and myself uh, talked about doing was 
um, integrating all those features that are in both meetings and combining it into one. I'd be glad to go through all the changes if you want, but that's pretty self-explanatory. Okay, any questions from council on the changes in uh, format of council meetings? Councilman Forrest? Mayor, this might be to Tom or whomever. Does the, uh, I didn't see that the committees were brought back as they previously have. Is that accurate? This is really more of a, there's some technicalities I saw here related to electronic voting and electronic meetings. There were some technical, and then essentially just having two regular meetings and the changes to just do that. I didn't see anything really related to committees and bringing back committees and stuff. Is that accurate? No, our intent was not to bring any, any new committees back. Right. To um, set up ad, you know, ad hoc committees, if you will, as, as things come up, like, you know, ARPA funding and that kind of thing. Sure, sure. Nothing, uh, uh, on a regular basis, like what's done in the past. Got it. And just food for thought, everybody, I'm totally in agreement with some of the technical changes related to electronic voting and electronic showing up to meetings and stuff like that. That's a modernization, completely appropriate. Maybe I have a little bit of a perspective of time with this, um, but we did, we made the adjustment because for several reasons, but to have workshop is to have some more robust conversation about some of the bigger topics, to encourage forces of strong work, but to encourage the town manager to come up with some more thoughtful agendas for us as we move forward so that the council could engage, get information, digest, and then make a decision from the previous. And, and, um, and I think it's done that. It's, it's probably not perfect, it probably the other way isn't either, I don't see that the current mic method is broken though. And I don't see where it's ever been broken. Um, we can always do emergency meeting, emergency items at a particular meeting. There's easy votes to do that. Um, so since I don't see that portion of it as broken or needing modernization, and, the, and, and I believe over the last two or three years, it has worked that we have had more robust conversation, just like we talked about the bike path, we had, that had gone through. It was a committee of the whole. We talked about it workshop. We talked about uh, the, the trash discussion, which will come back on our agenda, right? This is not like a one hit. We have to make an instant decision. And I know Dan O'Connor, it upsets you when that happens because it upsets me too. And we get these last minute things. Um, it, 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 it may be slightly more difficult for the town manager, whomever sits in that seat, but it's more difficult because it, it provides and it forces more forethought through the communication with us and the engagement with ourselves uh, and a discussion of the issues. So I'm happy to vote for the portion that changes and clears up some of the public comment portion, changes and clears up all the electronic stuff. But uh, the rest of it, I don't think is, it's not broken. Uh, and in fact, engages the, town, the discussion between the town manager and the council in a, in a better way. And I think that we've seen that and this is from understanding the way it was in the past, both are able to run a government. One is not like a stop the other, but uh, the way that we have it now encourages that workshop, that more robust discussion and getting issues before us earlier so we can digest them before we're forced to make a decision in the next meeting. Food for thought for everybody. So, uh, Mr. Deputy Mayor. If I can just uh, shed a little light on one item for uh, Councilor Forrest. Um, you'll see at the, at the beginning of the meeting, we have, uh, as we did tonight, we have th item three was presentations. And uh, our intent was to use that as the workshop discussion point at the beginning of the meeting. And you wouldn't necessarily have to act on that later on in the meeting. You could just uh, have a discussion, uh, a presentation by staff or whoever uh, might be appropriate and uh, have that as the workshop item, if you will. So just to throw that out. Uh, and that's the way it was before, uh, Deputy Mayor. And like I said, you, you can run a government either way. It doesn't stop you. but. 
it, it really does encourage a town manager to be more thoughtful with our uh, agendas and it encourages them and, and a knowledge that they have this meeting where they're intending to have a robust conversation. It, it sort of forces it and forces not, a, it doesn't really force it, but encourages it into a certain situation that I think we found to be helpful as a town council when we have votes like today where we're fully engaged and understand what's before us when we come to, when we came to vote on it. So it encourages that situation. Again, you can run it either way, but I didn't see it as broken. Any other questions? Councilman O'Connor? Hey, just a clarification. Thank you, Mayor. Hey, Tom, just on section G, so that I would assume is in the case of, you know, a counselor can't physically be at the council meeting, but is available to dial in. And so basically they would be doing some type of Zoom-like meeting, maybe it's not video. Uh, and I just want to confirm, but they would be able to actually take part and vote as well, just to confirm that. Yes, originally they could not, they could only listen. And now they can vote. Said, uh, so we struck out no votes shall be allowed to be taken and no comments shall be made via telephone or electronic means. We struck that out. Well, it, 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 and the only reason I asked that is just for clarification, it states town council members shall be able to listen to council meetings, but it doesn't say, should we say listen and take an active part in council meetings? I, I don't know, I'm, I'm not a lawyer, but. Yeah, and you know, I think you, I agree with you that that should be taken out as well. Should be say, should say participate. Yeah, Bonnie, I think you were going to say something. We wanted to, the intent was to allow a Zoom meeting um, if need be. Yep. Um, you know, the intent was still to have full council, either Zoom or uh, in person, not to have, you know, one or two individuals decide that they would rather stay home that, that night. Right. We can, we can reword G if you prefer. No, I, I just looking for clarification and if you guys are comfortable with that, that's fine. Bonnie, I think you were going to say something. Yeah, I was just going to say very quickly, I can have uh, our town attorney take a quick look at that section. I did have him look at it, especially with the governor's executive orders, but let me just have Ken take one more look and make sure he's comfortable with what we've worded or if he wants to make a couple quick changes. Yeah, I, 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 I just think like from my perspective is, you know, I think council members will do everything they can to be there in person. I think it just, there's been a history of that and I would be surprised if that changes, but there are times when in the summer, you know, earlier summer, there are times when, you know, someone may have to travel for work, but they could be sitting in a hotel room and they could easily dial in and be an active part of the meeting. And I, I may be speaking about myself, but I'm sure I'm not alone on that. And, um, if they have the ability to do that and actually take votes, then I think that's great. But I, I don't know. That's what I was trying to say. Is that what that intent is? Yeah, that, that's why we struck out the, the line there with the no votes right. allowed. In the past, you were you were not allowed to call in and, and vote. Right. Yeah. And then, then I would just make a recommendation that in that first line, listen and be a active yeah. member or whatever just so there's no doubt but that that was an oversight on my part for sure okay. councilman lesser thank you mayor uh, thanks to tom and bonnie who did a lot of work on this um uh it was uh interesting to go through it all but i want to agree strongly with councilor o'connor you know we're seeing this in the pandemic the last couple of years that we have to be flexible and adapt 
and it, whether it's people traveling, where it's people with different situations on the council, I think he's right that uh, everyone's going to be in person as much as they possibly can, but to allow for phone or electronic participation, and I like the word participation, I think makes a lot of sense, Tom, we can reword that a little bit, but I think that should be included to be flexible, uh, one, given the situation we are now in and, and what we may be in going forward, so thank you. Thank you, Councilwoman Pelletier. Just want to piggyback on that in Section G. There was just one other thing um, that says a meeting quorum can only be determined by the members that are physically present in the meeting room, unless there is an electronic method used for all members at a council meeting. So that seems to indicate that if um, if it's an in-person meeting where one person can participate by phone or zoom or whatever and participate but they can't they don't count toward a quorum is and i think if they're allowed to participate then they probably should count toward a quorum um but i don't know just something but aside from that i um i actually i think that these changes are good and i um i thank you for you know tom and ken and bonnie for all your work on this I, I think that the way the meetings were with the workshop meeting and a regular meeting, there was almost no difference the way that in, in that they ended up working out. And um, I think um, the Councillor Forrest's concerns about, um, you know, that it might limit robust discussions, I think for, um, you know, certain issues can go on the agenda for discussion only um, if it's something that, you know, we all do need to discuss and, and that can and, and does happen. Um, I think that, uh, I just think it makes more sense to me the way that um, these have been revised. So I appreciate your work on this. And um, yeah, and that was just one small thing about G and the, and the quorum, something to think about. I see your point with the quorum. So if we have four people who are physically present in a room and a fifth that is by electronic means like Zoom or, or phone, um, would that constitute a quorum in your opinion, Councilwoman Pelletier? By reading this, it seems like no, that it would be the members that are physically present unless there is an electronic method used for all members at the council meeting. So Yeah, so it seems to me from reading it, if it's, you know, if it's a Zoom meeting like tonight, you know, we're all here and this is a quorum, but if it's, if it's a hybrid or, you know, if some people are physically present in council chambers and some people are electronic, that's, it seems the way it's written that only the people physically in uh, council chambers would count towards a quorum. And I don't know if, I don't think that's the intent as long as, you know, the, the people can participate the uh you know the people who are not right. the present so okay i think I mean, we I, have i just think we need to reword that section but i think we're all on the same page as far as what we'd like it to say which is good yep dan heading out to the airport catches a seven o'clock uh council meeting before the flight so Matt and yeah, I think I think Councillor Pelletier is right about the reading of that, and and I actually think she's also right about that a person who is able to fully participate and has the ability to fully participate and fully vote, whether it's Zoom, I think we might have to talk about telephone a little bit, um, would probably constitute a member of the quorum to be able to make a quorum. I wouldn't necessarily leave the stricken out. Uh, language here as blank. I think there should be an affirmative statement saying if you are participating in a certain method that you are able to vote. And if you leave it out blank, then it, don't make it dicey. Just have an affirmative statement. Whatever we decide is appropriate. Um, and then we should also really, I think, affirmatively decide. And, and we could sort of academically talk about this, but like I showed up the other day because I was sick, right? But I, I was one member. It was, it was electronically provided to me. You could all be in the room and electronically see it. I don't know if it speaks to the 
spirit of what's on this page, like a, a, a meeting that we're having right now, I was participating 100%. I could vote 100%. It wasn't a problem there, but it leaves an interesting gap of you're on a business trip. I mean, it's the first thing I thought of, Dan, too, <laughs> right? You're, you're feeling sick. You're at your vacation house in whatever. You're working. Um, can you just, can a counselor just request it? Does it have to be a motion made? Does it have to be three people like putting on an agenda? There's a few aspects of this that we probably should just make some nice bright line rules, just agree to them uh, that would that would just say, okay, you know, I'm on a business trip. It's one person I'm not allowed in because blah, 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 or, or we are allowed. Uh, but you are with this flexibility with the new world is going to provide opportunity to participate at times when you might not normally have been able to participate business trip, vacation, et cetera. Um, and, and, and it should be spelled out in G and I'm totally for working out whatever the rules are in this area. Uh, but, but it needs a little bit of adjustment. And certainly with the votes and the quorum, it should be clear as day what our rules are related to this. And I, I, uh, I'm not sure I have any very thoughtful comments above that, but we just agree on whatever the rules are. And I think we could have our town attorney review any of the, the changes um, and base it off uh, the governor's executive order, which I think the legislature codified, and I don't know if it's indefinitely or indefinite or if it is um, temporary, but uh, you know, the governor's executive order to allow us to be on this platform that we are on tonight, uh, just about two years ago, uh, may be covered under state statute. And I don't know if it's covered under state statute uh, forever or if it's temporary, but um, you know, I think our town attorney would know that and be able to help us with that as well. Another issue might be is like, does a counselor have a right to attend, right? If, if, if Dan's on a business trip, if the counselor Connor's on a business trip and he says, no, I, I would like to attend, I would like to be able to vote. Can, can the council say, no, you're not, it's, it's not a good reason or you can't or whatever. And that should be, that should be cleared up too. Is the, do the counselors have a right to attend electronically? Do they have a right to attend by phone? We debated this for about 45 minutes, about 15 years ago. And, and that's where the initial language came from. It's a new, it's a new era now. Right. And if you arrive by, if you're just doing it by phone, is there really a verification that that is who it says it to be? Could there, although it's, it's, it's a long shot admittedly, but like, can you sort of mimic someone or just call in and say it's someone else? Is there a proxy kind of a thing? There's a few issues that just could use some bright line rules. Mm -hmm. Mr. Deputy Mayor. Yeah, I think just to kind of rehash it, I don't think there's any intent by anybody to like restrict the council member from participating in a meeting, whether it's with the group or in a hotel room somewhere. Um, and I think we've kind of covered that where we, we say every effort made by the members. So yeah, we need to re rewrite G in its entirety, have the town attorney review it and uh, revisit it, I guess, at the next meeting. And you might even want to have like a almost like a rule that says, you know, if a councilor member wants to or needs to participate electronically, they will notify the town manager at least X amount of time in advance. You get into a situation where I can't make it. I call up town manager. I'll, I'll make myself be the baddie here. You know, five minutes before the meeting, I'm sorry, I can't make it. I really want to participate. But now that person is stuck, like fumbling, maybe. And then does the town manager say, I'm I'm sorry, Councillor Forrest, you can't because we haven't prepared it. Now has this counselor's right been removed? So you might want to just have some guidelines for counselors to be able to participate or notify or that ability. We can put names of the counselors who's allowed to take, <laughs> take I'm sure I'll be excluded. <laughs> I appreciate the humor, Deputy Mayor. <laughs>
Okay. And then I'm just reading, and thank you, Bonnie, for the email. So it does look like the legislature codified it so that they can be held purely virtual. But again, it, it gets into that gray area of, you know, this is a purely virtual uh, council meeting. You know, I mean, we're in a pandemic where we're meeting to limit the exposure of, you know, residents who come in. If we're having an in-person meeting and it's the middle of August and somebody says, you know, sorry, I, you know, I'm going to be away, but I'll call in from, you know, the snack shop at some beach or something like that. And <clears throat> there's nothing to stop them from doing that either. So, yeah, I think we got to, you know, tighten it up a little bit. <clears throat> okay. Um, I think we'll hold this item for the time being. Um, I, you know, we could probably hold it until the next meeting, which um, we should be able to have uh, everything done before for then. Any opposition to uh, hold this meeting or hold the uh, table this item? I have to make a motion to table. I'll move. Table, table, table until the next um, regular next council meeting. <laughs> yep. Table until the next meeting. Motion has been made and seconded. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, nay. I have it. Okay. Thank you. And uh, I believe the minutes were included in our packets. This is for our last meeting just before Christmas, December 20th meeting. Anybody, um, any questions on those comments, concerns? I move acceptance of the December 20th meeting. Second. Motion's been made and seconded. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Ayes have it. Uh, do we have any folks left over on the phone? I see Mr. Young still on. And that may be it. Yes, we just have the one mayor. Um, I believe it is Mr. Young. If you wish to speak, uh, star six. Okay. Could give him. He usually speaks at both sessions, but there were some audio concerns earlier on for him. Mr. Young, can you hear us? Uh, I'm here. Oh, okay. Please hit uh, star six to unmute yourself if you want to speak in the uh, final five minute public hearing or public speaking comment section. Okay, I'm here. Uh, anyway, uh, I'm glad you're talking about these rules and the procedures and uh, you know, uh, keep working on them and uh, you just need to have, uh, forget the workshop issue and uh, let's keep going forward, okay? I gotta go. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Young. Good night. No executive sessions tonight. Uh, can I get a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. Motion to adjourn. Made and seconded. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Nice habit. Okay. Thank you, everybody. Stay safe out there. Happy New Year. Thanks. Happy New Year. Stay Happy safe. New Year, everyone. Happy New Year. Hopefully we'll be in person soon. Good night. Good night.